My grandfathers both worked in the business. My father was a captain for 40 years. I'm a captain and I have two sons in the business. I started fishing with my dad right out of high school. I quit college before I finished my junior year and I went fishing. I just knew that's what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to fish. This job right here is not, not only something that I'm proud of, it's something that I, I don't mind passing on because it, it's not just a job, you know what I mean? It's, it's a whole lot of things that you can learn out here. A lot of things that you can learn and you can take other places. When I went to a college prep school, went to four years college prep. Everybody was like, what college are you going to? I was like, um, CBU. They were like, CBU? I said, yeah, Chesapeake Bay University. <laughs> Catch Menhaden, produce a product, but also be very aware of the community and uh, regulations and rules and uh, be excellent stewards. And, and that's, uh, that's been instilled in us uh, ever since I've been here. My dad always told me, he said, get your men aboard the boat early, get your rest, because you're going to need it. We leave out on Sunday evening and we get a report from the airplanes on where they saw the fish that Sunday. So we make preparations. We look at conditions. A lot of times, fish won't show the same place two days in a row. We look at our environment. First things I look for in the morning is bird activity, you know? A lot of times we don't see the fish, but they can see the fish for us. The birds of like we are, they've gone all night long and they're hungry, we're hungry. Looking as they say, scanning the globe, looking for signs, looking for a pelican dropping over here. You see the birds diving, you know that there's some fish around and they got it going on, and then the planes, you're waiting patiently for them to come. We really have brought the industry around by being able to locate the fish from the air because of the amount of territory that we can cover in a quick time. Well, their day usually starts at daylight and we try to uh, be in position over the boats when it is enough light to see the water and the fish, which usually means taking off before sunrise. We've got all of these radios and we're listening to about 10 at a time and you're trying to distinguish who's got the best fish, where you need to position the boat to go catch the fish. And depending on the color, the way they're whipping and the size of the school, just from experience, we can halfway estimate the number of fish that are in each school. And then we will uh, just call the boats and tell them, well, look, we're in the North Channel. We've got uh, five places here that might go 75,000, two places go 150,000, and one go 500,000. If the planes come off and say, Cap, we, you got good fish right there by you, they'll call me on the radio. And they say, hey, Bill, um, nice bunch of fish on your starboard bow, mile, mile and a half, um, might have 100, 150,000 in it. You know, you wanna pick it up? Well, absolutely. And uh, I'll say, okay, Carl, we'll come and tell you. That notifies the crew to be on standby. And then of course, when we get ready to deploy the boats, we'll blow the horn. All right, go ahead, drop off. And you got half the net in each boat. I think they're like 1,800 feet long, so you know, you got 900 feet in each boat. You have corks on top of the net. Okay, get ready. All right, there you go, open up.
you just do a half a circle with each boat. And when those boats come together, that's when your work begins. The purse line runs through the rings on the net. That gets put into a tom weight, which is just a big 800 pound weight. The tom goes overboard. And that's basically getting ready to close your bottom of your net up. So that draws your net all the way down as far as it will go. And, it, and it, it's an art to pursing the net. You just don't purse this side, that side, that side, that, you know. You can't just purse both sides at the same time. You know, you might have to slack back a little bit. And uh, it's just a little technique to it. So after we get the, uh, the net shut down, we have a process we call cutting the rings off. That connector where the purse lines are connected, you'll take them and, and you cut them off with a piece of rope. If he gets his rings in the mate boat, I get my rings in the captain boat, then we start webbing on. The captain boat and the mate boat got blocks in their boat, which you got to put that webbing in those blocks. Which are, are hydraulically driven uh, gears and uh, the net passes through it. Then they start pressing that webbing on and that's how you fish get tightened up as it grows, as the net coming back in your boat. And the more, more net you get in, the tighter the fish you get. You're getting all of that straight. And all you're doing is you're just working those fish right on around to the center of the net. And the center of the net is a, it's a different webbing. It's, it's called bunt, which is a knotted webbing. It's the strongest part of the net. That's where all your fish get dried up to. Once you get that straight and get it like you want, then you tie all of that back until your steamer can pick you up. You've got this big boat going alongside those 40-foot boats. You've got a lot of net overboard. A lot can go wrong in that procedure. It always plays a big role in safety. Everybody's got an eye on everybody else. Just make sure nobody gets hurt because there's a lot of moving objects on in one of those first boats. So you got to keep your eyes open, know what you're doing. We talk about safety right much on this boat. And that, that, that's the way it should be. You have your, your mate at the helm, two engineers, and you have a cook on deck. And um, they'll come alongside and we'll throw some lines up and they'll hang those corks right up against the long, long side the steamer there. And we'll start uh, hardening the fish up. We'll uh, put straps on the head of the net, raise it up the, uh, to the top of the gear. And then we'll draw that net back. We'll put another strap on. We'll get another hook. We'll raise it right on up. And we'll do that two, three, four, five times sometimes uh, until the fish get hardened up. You want to get them kind of dry so when you throw your hose overboard to suck the fish, you know, it's, uh, it's actually sucking fish instead of a lot of water. The fish go into the hose, in through the pump, up the pipe, into the dewatering area. And, uh, and basically once you, uh, once you bail all the fish, get the net back in the boat and pick your boats up and do it again. Your biggest fear, it's one thing to tear the net as you're setting the net, your fish will swim free. Your biggest fear is when you have fish bunted up alongside in a tight formation and you hang something on the bottom you lose your fish, you gotta get on the phone and call the company immediately. We need to try to retrieve these fish to keep these fish from going to shore, being a, a, a nuisance. It's something that you don't ever wanna have to do, but it happens. And we have, we have excluders on the boat that if you happen to catch a skate or a shark, will exclude the fish, throw them over the side and they'll swim off. I mean, it's, we have the least bycatch of any fishery there is because we target our species. We know exactly what we're after. These guys, 35, 40,000 hours looking down, they know what they're looking at. We have a respect for the bay. I mean, it's going to hurt us if we're going to do anything to the bay, it's going to hurt it. I mean, the bay is our life. I mean, we don't want, we don't want to mess it up in any. For two years, we had federal observers out of Woods Hole, Massachusetts from NOAA come on. And they were like, when are we going to see something besides Menhaden? I said, I don't know. I don't want to tell you about that. If that's what you come on here looking for, you might, you know, you might not see it. I couldn't imagine being anywhere else besides uh, working for Mega Protein or fishing. Getting out of bed and, and 
looking forward to working and doing what you do. The majority of us that been on this boat, been on this boat for years together, Lee and myself, this year coming up would be 17 years that I actually been with Lee. So, uh, not, not just family, I mean, I mean, it's blood. Omega protein is me, basically. It's always take care of your crew, take care of your vessel, treat your men fair, treat your co-workers good, you know, and, and be honest and loyal to the people you work for, and uh, said you rise to the top. That's way my dad did his, his gang, and uh, you know, you get a lot of respect and a lot of loyalty, you know, going that route. I mean, most of my friends, half of them, have either worked here part of their life or their fathers worked here, their grandfathers worked here. It's real, it's real community based. My father became a captain when I was probably six years old. So I grew up around it, listening to it, hearing him talk about the stories. My grandfather on my mother's side was a Menhaden captain. My grandfather on my father's side was a boat builder. And my middle brother fished with me for a while as, as a young man until he got his boat. My father was also a boat builder. My, my father was a Menhaden uh, fisherman. He was a captain for uh, many years. My son is also in the industry. He is pilot on a Menhaden vessel here in Reedville. And I feel like I taught my middle brother a little bit too much because he got to the point to where he was beating me. <laughs> but you're always trying to help the next generation. The phone line's always open for him to call me, say, Dad, uh, what about this? What about that? Here local, you know, it's a, it's a big honor, it really is. Not only are you supporting your family, hell, you're supporting the community, you know?